And for those of you who haven't had a chance to register for the summer library program, uh, now is the time. Please go to your local library. You get a free book just for participating. All you have to do is do one, um, 10 challenges and then you get another book on our activity log. You're gonna see a list of items. You can go for a hike, you can make a zine, you could do all sorts of stuff. So go to your local Timberland Regional Library and visit us today to get your free activity log book and get started with the summer library program. And now, who's ready to learn about animals? I am, it's owl day. So we're gonna pass it over to Abby and Abby's gonna teach us all about owls. So thank you all for coming. I hope to, I hope to see you all next week for our program, same time, same place, one o'clock in Zoom. Alrighty, enjoy. All right. Hello, everybody. I'm so uh, happy that you guys had me come on today to talk to you about owls. Owls happen to be one of my favorite birds, so I'm really excited to share them with you today. So uh, as I said, my name is Abby and I work for an organization called River Valley Raptors. So we are located over in Wisconsin, right along the Mississippi River in a special area called the Driftless Area. So it is an area where we have the river as surrounded by the bluffs. And so it's a beautiful area and it's great habitat to all sorts of wildlife and all sorts of raptors. And so our mission is uh, conservation of both raptors as well as that driftless area to keep it around for people to come and experience it and view it and get to see all the really cool wildlife that we have there. So we have um, many different raptors that we have here that we use for uh, ambassadors for their species that get to travel around and do really cool education programs for people like you guys. Uh, and so today we're going to focus on our owls. So uh, for those of you who want to learn a little bit more about raptors, we typically have four major groups of raptors. We have the owls, like we're talking about today, the hawks, the falcons and the eagles. Um, we also have kind of little smaller groups such as vultures, osprey, harriers, um, but those are typically the four big ones. And to be a raptor, you have to have three things in common that all raptors have. They have really big eyes and really good eyesight. They have a hooked or curved beak that they use for ripping and tearing their food into smaller pieces. And then they have uh, big or strong feet and sharp talons. And so those are their weapons. That is how they catch their prey um, is with those feet and those talons. And then that beak is like their fork, knife and fork where they use it to rip and tear just like a tool. So that's typically what makes a raptor a raptor. And now owls, because they're a different, um, because they're their own group of raptors, they have their own set of adaptations. So I'm gonna go ahead and get out um, the smallest owl that you would find here in Wisconsin. So there are some smaller species of owls down south, um, but this is pretty close in size to the smallest owls that we have in the US. So he's right behind me here and he's actually our newest ambassador and he is only, ooh, he's ready to come out. He's only about, um, about six to eight weeks old. So he is full grown though. Come here, buddy. Oh, hello. So this here is Darwin. And Dar Darwin is a Northern Sawet owl. And he sees himself right now. So he's getting pretty excited. Um, he's like, who is that owl? I need to go and get him. Um, and he, uh, so he's still in what we call juvenile plumage, um, which just means that he, um, he's going to lose this kind of brown coloring and he's going to look a little bit different when he becomes an adult, um, which he will within the next year. But this is as big as he's going to get. He's not going to get any bigger than this. Now, if you take a look at him, he's got that curved beak. He's got those really big eyes. In fact, raptor's eyes are typically about the size of their brain. Owl's eyes are actually bigger than their brains. In fact, if we were to have the same size eyes in comparison to an owl, our eyes would be the size of our fist. 
So for those of you watching, if you put your fist up into your head, that's how big your eyes would be if you had owl eyes. So really, really big. In fact, their eyes are so big that they actually have to have special bony plates, just like this skull right here, um, that actually helps support those eyes. Um, so you can kind of see that big bony ridge of that owl's eyes. Um, so another thing they have other than just those large eyes, oh, and you can see his talons right there, just like we talked about. So even though he's got little feet, because he's going to be going after smaller prey, such as mice and insects and um, little things that might be scurrying around at night. Um, but they also have features that are specific just to owls. So because these guys like to hunt at night, which means they're nocturnal, um, they actually rely more on their ears than they do on their eyes. So they do have those big eyes that allow them to kind of absorb some light, but they also um, have ears that are placed up high, facing forward, and down low, facing backwards. So they have misplaced ears or um, misaligned. So, so the one up high faces forward and the one down low faces backwards instead of symmetrical hearing, where we have an ear right across from the other, they have this asymmetrical hearing. And they have what we call a facial disc. So if he looks at us, darling, can you look at yourself? You see how he has this really, really round head and kind of like a, a disc? Um, it's called a facial disc. And if you were to cup your ears, you're gonna notice that sound actually gets louder. So all of those little feathers that are acting as like that facial disc, um, are collecting that sound and sending it to his ears. Now, as you're watching him, if you notice him kind of bobbing his head a little bit, what he's doing is he's collecting all of the sounds that he can hear right now, and he's triangulating them, which means that he can find where his prey is just by hearing it. So he doesn't even have to see it. He can find it and catch it just by hearing, using those ears. Now, some owls have such good hearing that they can hear a mouse running under the snow. Figure out where that mouse is and dive through the snow and catch it. Now, Darwin here, um, he, as I mentioned, what you doing, buddy? Um, as I mentioned, he uh, hatched right here at our facility. And so he has been learning to fly in the house. And so today was the first day that we actually put on some equipment on him. So this is called a Jess and it goes through little anklets that are attached to his legs, just like little bracelets. And that's to allow him to stay here because Darwin likes to fly, hey buddy, all around the house. And he thinks he kind of owns the house. And so I figured he would be willing to sit with us for a little while, but then he's gonna wanna go and explore the rest of the house here pretty soon. So in order to get him to kind of hang out with us for a little bit, um, he's gonna sit here on my glove and he's, this is actually his second ever program. So you guys are one of the first people that gets to meet Darwin. Now, raptors um, are, aren't like songbirds where the males are really beautifully colored and the females are kind of a more camouflage brownish grayish color. Males and females actually look exactly the same. So there's really only one way to tell the difference between a male and a female solid owl. And that is due to their size. And so females are typically about a third of the size larger than the males. And that's because they're gonna have to sit on the nest, incubate the eggs, keep them warm and defend the nest against predators. And if the males are smaller, that makes them more agile and better hunters. And so they do a lot of the hunting uh, while the female does more of the incubating and the protecting of the nest. So when Darwin and his sister um, were both younger, um, Darwin looked quite a bit smaller than his sister, so we assumed he was a boy. Um, however, as he's growing older, um, he's gotten quite a bit bigger um, and quite a bit heavier, and so Darwin may be getting a name change to just Winnie because Darwin may in fact be a girl instead of a boy. So um, the only way to really tell again the difference um, outside of that size is we could take a feather or a blood sample and we could send it in and they could tell us if he was a boy or a girl based on his DNA. So yeah, so you kind of see how he's doing that head bobbing 
and then you can kind of see he's really focusing on what he's hearing and what he's seeing. And he's looking to see where he can go and explore. Now, the reason we hatched Darwin here um, at our facility is because um, owls, they did a study and found that adult owls that get injured um, don't, don't really do well adapting to um, being in front of people. They're used to being outside. They're used to being um, out when it's dark. And so it can be really rough transition for an owl to not be able to go back into the wild and have to be in front of people all the time. And so with his parents who were both non-releasable um, owls that went to a rehab center in Oregon, um, they came to our facility and showed that they didn't really like doing programs very much. It kind of scared them. And so we paired them up with each other. And this spring, um, they, there you go, buddy. Um, this spring, oh, thanks, Darwin. That was inappropriate. Um, so uh, this spring, they had laid two eggs and hatched out two little baby owls. And at about a week old, um, we took those owls um, out of the box and we hand raised them for the parents so that they would be used to people. And so because I was the one feeding him instead of his mom, he looked up at me and said, oh, you're feeding me. You must be my mom. I must be a human. So he's what we call a human imprint. And so that makes him much more comfortable um, being around people and doing programs. So I was going to let him take off and, and fly around, but we have one more owl to get out and I don't really want you bothering her. So I'm going to put him back for right now. And he can come back out in a little bit. Um, so before I get out our next owl, so I kind of showed you, you know, some of the equipment we have. So this is what we call the Jess. Um, and then this is a glove that I wear on my hand to help protect my hand from those talons. And then we talked about how owls have those bony plates that help protect um, their eyes. Now, because their eyes are so big and those bony plates kind of protect them, it actually makes their eyes fixed inside their head. Um, so if we keep our head still, we can look up, we can look down, we can look side to side. So we've got these muscles that allow our eyes to move, but there's not really any room left in here for any muscles. So their eyes are actually fixed inside their head. So if you stick your hands up like this and I ask you to look at the ceiling, you're gonna have to move your whole head up and your whole head down and side to side um, to be able to move or to be able to see up and down and side to side. So these guys actually have really, really flexible necks. So if I turn as far as I can, I can make it over my shoulder. That's about 90 degrees. Now, most raptors can turn their heads and look behind their backs at 180 degrees, just right around, pretty cool. But owls, they can go a step further and they can go over their shoulder, behind their backs, and they can keep going and look over their other shoulder at 200 and 70 degrees. So that allows them to see all around. Now, because owls are hunting at night, it's a lot colder at night than it is during the day. So another difference they have from the rest of our raptor friends are they have feathers all the way down to their toes. And this is gonna help keep their feet warm, both at night when it's colder, as well as in the winter time. Because here in Wisconsin, it gets pretty cold um, in the winter time. And so we get snow on the ground. And so those feathers um, are gonna help protect those toes during the nighttime and during the winter, um, since they'll stay here year round. So this is actually from a snowy owl. Uh, and so you can see his feathers are so feathery all the way down to his feet. It actually kind of looks like little snowshoes, allowing them to even so much as kind of walk on the snow. So I'm going to go ahead and get out our other owl for you. And in the meantime, um, feel free if you guys have questions to use the chat. And you're welcome to message your questions to me. And once I'm done showing our other owl, I can hopefully get to those questions and answer them for you. So I'm just going to be right off to the side here. Oop. That's right. 
I had one more artifact to show you guys, but I will show you when I get our other bird out. Uh, Darwin made that fall on the floor when he was flapping his wings. All right. Go. And up here. Got a little tangled in the box here. All right, there we go. This here is Sophie. And Sophie is an American barn owl. And so you can see she's quite a bit bigger than Darwin. She's uh, one of the medium sized owls that we have in this area. And oh, unfortunately, I lost my feather again. Here we go. Ah. Uh, so one of the last things I didn't mention, whoop, come here, Sophie. Just a little weirded out by being inside. Normally we do outside programs. Um, oh, I'm sorry, the feather's a little scary. I'll kind of move the feather over here. Um, so one of the last things that I always have that are different is that when they are flying, they are actually silent flyers. They don't make any noise when they fly. So unlike, um, unlike falcons, who are the fastest bird in the world, owls are actually pretty slow. They don't need to be fast because it's dark out. They're typically camouflage and their feathers allow them to have silent flight. So this is from a great horned owl feather. <laughs> Sophie really doesn't like our owl feather here. Um, and the softness of this feather is what allows them to have that silent flight. So are you, you wanna take a look at the camera there? That's not another owl, you know, that's just you, so. <laughs> Um, so, so that silent flight um, allows them to sneak up on their prey. Now that's another reason why, um, or when they have that good of hearing, another reason they have to be silent is because if they were flapping and had lots and lots of noise going on with their wings, they wouldn't be able to hear those tiny little footprints of a mouse. Now barn owls, they actually have the best hearing, not only of um, owls, but they actually have one of the best hearings out of all the animals that we have in the world. Their hearing is so good that they can hear that mouse under at least two feet of snow. That's how good that hearing is. So you can see that facial disc that allows her to hear that noise. And then if we take a look at her back, these guys, um, they get the name barn owl because they do like to nest in barns. Um, but then they also like to hunt over open fields. And so that kind of brownish gray color, here Sophie, um, actually um, helps them camouflage when they're hunting over an open field. Now that actually though, so these guys, when they're hunting in a barn, a family of barn owls can actually kill more mice in a night than 10 barn cats combined. So owls are a great uh, animal to actually have and to encourage them to come to your property to maybe live in your barn um, because they're great at catching small rodents and, and mice. In fact, raptors are one of the best animals to actually help get rid of our rodent population to keep rats down, to keep mice down. Um, so something that can often kill these guys is when we use poison to get rid of mice or rats that might be in our house. Um, typically the mouse doesn't die right after it eats the poison. It kind of eats it and it wanders off. Well, nothing looks more tasty to a, a an owl than kind of a, a mouse that might be moving a little slow. And so they'll come down and they'll eat that mouse and then they'll get what we call secondary poisoning. And so it doesn't just kill the mouse, it can kill an owl, it could kill a cat if the cat decides to eat that poison mouse, it could kill a dog. Um, so it's always better if we do have mice in our house that we use traps instead of poison to help get rid of them. So she, she's uh, taking a look around the around the room here. Where are you going, girl? You gotta stay over here a little bit longer. Now, Sophie's only not quite a year old yet. Um, she hatched right at the end of June um, and she's actually a captive red bird as well. Um, so she came over from Maryland and we got her as a baby last summer. And again, just like with Darwin, we, will, we were able to hand raise her. Um, however, something in our dining room is making her uncomfortable. Something new because we brought her in yesterday to test her out and she seemed pretty happy in here. So I'm not sure what's making her a little uncomfortable today. Um, 
But let's take a look and see some of our messages here, some of our questions. Uh, wondering how big the biggest kind of owl is. That's a good question. Um, here, in, um, here in the US, the biggest owls that we have are uh, the great gray owl is one of the biggest in terms of wingspan. So they have the biggest or the biggest wingspan. Um, however, snowy owls are actually larger in weight. Um, so they're heavier birds, um, kind of more fit for the Arctic. And um, however, the biggest owl in the world, I, I wanna say it's a fish owl, but I'm not exactly sure. I'd have to, I'd have to research that one for you. Um, we also had someone else who was wondering how big the biggest owl is. Nora asked what Darwin's sister looks like. That is a great question. Darwin's sister actually looks just like him. It's very hard to tell him apart other than she has a slightly bigger head. Now, Darwin's sister actually left us about two weeks ago, and she is now an ambassador in Oregon. Um, so she is at the Cascades Raptor Center in Eugene, Oregon, um, training to become an ambassador just like Darwin is. All right. Oh. Yeah, so um, as we're taking a look at her, um, yeah, she kind of does different things that shows me whether she's comfortable or uncomfortable. Um, and um, yeah, so we're kind of looking at her different ways. So the, the fact that she's kind of looking around is what's showing me that she might be um, a little nervous about something. But earlier, um, when she kind of put their like wings out and kind of put their head down, um, that's called like a threat posture. And so if you were to ever go into like a nest of baby owls, um, especially baby barn owls, they put their head down like that and they might click and they might hiss. Um, and what they want to do is they want to sound like snakes or like predators, like like, you know, so they, so when a predator comes, um, they don't think they're a prey item that the predator could come and eat. They think that there's something big predator that's scary. And then the other predator that wants to maybe come eat on like a fox or something um, is going to find them scary and might, um, might take off then. So um, Ms. Scarlett is wondering how big Darwin's head is. You know, I didn't actually measure his head. That's a really good um, question. So I'll have to, next time I have him out here, I'll have to measure just how big his head is. Um, now, one of my favorite facts about the barn owl, um, and it's actually one of the reasons why I love, I love teaching about these guys, is if you take a look, she's got this beautiful white belly. And so um, she's really, really pretty. Um, and again, these guys are, uh, are silent when they hunt. Um, but they're actually the reason for a lot of ghost stories. And the reason that they started a bunch of ghost stories is because barn owls, they don't hoot. So Darwin, uh, solid owls, their hoot's kind of like a hoo, 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 hoo. But barn owls, <laughs> I would do it, but I'd probably scare someone. They actually scream. They sound just like a woman screaming. And so when we had these farmers hundreds of years ago, they'd be It'd be getting dark out, they'd be finishing up for the night, and all of a sudden they'd hear a scream and they'd look up and this white owl would just kind of float over their head because it wasn't making noise, it was white. They thought their, their barns were haunted. Um, and so, you know, they a lot of these haunted barn stories actually just came as a result of barn owls living there. Um, so in the absence of barn, where else do barn owls live? Yeah, that's a great question. These guys are what we call cavity nesters, which means that they're going to live in cavities such as trees, um, or you know, we, we get barns because they go into the window of a barn and old buildings, um, so they kind of have that area to nest in. Um, but yeah, they want to find, they're not going to make their own nest. Um, they're going to find other places like those cavities. That's why if you have dead hollow trees in your backyard, it's really great if you're not worried about them, you know, falling over onto, onto your house or onto your cars. If you can leave them up, they actually provide excellent habitat, not just for barn owls, but screech owls, solid owls. Um, there's several mammals that like to use those cavities, squirrels and different things. Um, so they're really great habitat for animals to have. <laughs> Do barn owls show love to their rescuers? 
<laughs> that um, that's a good question. Um, you know, I used to work at a rehab center and of course we always like to think the animals, you know, love us for helping them. Um, but really, you know, it's like if you have to go to a doctor and you're in the hospital for a few days when you're finally better, um, you might be appreciative to your doctors for making you better, but you pretty much want to leave. You're like, all right, see you later. I don't ever want to go back to the doctor again. Um, so every time we release a bird, they take off and they don't typically hang around because they are ready to get back to their lives um, and get back home again. Now, um, Sophie here, just like Darwin, was raised by humans since the time she was young. Um, so she, again, is what we would consider a human imprint. So she thinks she's a person or she thinks we're all owls. Um, I'm not exactly sure which one. Um, so, you know, there, I, I don't know so much about love, um, because I can only guess what she is thinking, um, and how owls are thinking, but, um, she definitely has a lot of trust with us, um, because she allows us to, you know, take her out and do programs, right, right as I tell you how much you trust us, Sophie, and then you, and then you take off and, and try to leave, but that's okay. There you go. All right. So do we have any last questions? Otherwise, we do have a really fun um, art project that um, I'm going to have our intern come in here and help you guys um, do it so that I can put our, I'll, uh, put Sophie back in her enclosure. So how big is their wingspan? Yeah, so you can kind of see it when she puts her wings out like that. Um, I don't know all the measurements offhand on how big their wingspan is. Um, how many kinds of owls are there? Um, there are 11 species in Wisconsin. So because I'm here in Wisconsin, I know all the Wisconsin facts um, for owls. And so um, unfortunately, I don't know how many are in your state, um, but we have 11 here. And then in the world, oh, there is um, ooh, quite a few quite a few in the world. So they're on um, most of the, uh, I think all the continents except Antarctica. So they, um, there's, there's quite a few species out there. So, all right. Well, I'm going to grab uh, Maya. Um, so she is with us all summer learning about raptors. So she gets to live right here on the property. And, oh, awesome, 15 species of owls in Washington state for you guys. So, um, yeah, thanks Jennifer for letting us all know that. Um, and any of you, if you guys make it down to Oregon, you'll have to go say hi to uh, Darwin's sister. Um, her name was Frances when she was here because they both got um, very naturey names because they were um, they came into our house on Earth Day. Um, however, uh, Frances, I think just got a new name. It's Maple. Uh, so that is her new name at her new facility. So you guys will have to. Um, check out um, and go see her. So, all right, Maya, you're welcome to come on in here and get started. Um, how do owls locate things? So they don't use echolocation, they just use their ears. They just have really highly developed sense of hearing um, and that's how they're able to find things. So, yeah, um, all right. So I'm gonna go put Sophie away and Maya's going to sit down here and do a craft project for you guys. Thanks so much. And um, like River Valley Raptors on Facebook, if you want to see any other pictures of Darwin when he was a baby, Sophie when she was a baby, um, and you can see how they look like when they were really, really tiny and really cute. So, all right, there you go, Maya. Thank you, Abby. Hello, everybody. As Abby said, my name is Maya. I'm the intern here at River Valley Raptors. And today we're going to be making, oh, Sophie has some things to say about going back in her carrier. Today, we're going to be making a paper plate owl. So to start, I need you all to grab your two paper plates. Um, and the first you're going to cut in half. So take your paper plate and cut it in half like so. And then the second, it might be easier if you fold it in half and then cut it. So I just cut mine and it's not very even, but that depends on how even you want your owl to be. And then the second paper plate, you're gonna trim off a little bit on the top 
so that when you paint your owl, it looks like he has ears, kind of like a, a great horned owl, you know? So I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna go ahead and trim off the top of this paper plate. There we go. So kind of like that. You can see he's got little, little ears on there now. And then you can take your brown paint. I have a marker today and start to fill in your two paper plate halves and this one as well. This would probably be easier with um, brown paint, uh, but I'm just gonna use a brown marker for today. Should work pretty well. Uh, and if you guys want, you can fill in your whole paper plate completely. I'm gonna leave a little bit of white space uh, in the middle of the face so that it kind of looks like Darwin. Since I have small paper plates today, I kind of want it to look like our saw wet owl since he's so small. We can do the hand print owl. The hand print owl? Yeah, we have oh, that one. Okay. <laughs> That might be a little a little faster. Uh, would you like me to paint that, Abby? Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Change of plans. We're doing a different owl. Okay. Um. Let's see. So you grab some of your paints and a piece of paper. Blattes. We're doing a different craft. Um which is fine, this one will be just as fun, I promise. So, you take some of your paint. Um, I'm gonna use green. You can use... <laughs> Abby's daughter is asking me a question. <clears throat> so we're gonna start by making the branch that our owl is going to sit on. You can use brown paint, black paint. I'm gonna use green paint today. So you can take some of that under your finger or on a paintbrush if you prefer. Um, and then you can just start to make a branch that goes across your paper for your owl to sit on. Might have to mix some colors. This green's kind of light. Okay, so there is my branch. It doesn't look very branch-like just yet, but we're gonna put an owl on it soon. <clears throat> so this is where you'd want to grab your brown paint. Um, which, let's see. So most owls are brownish, but um, I'm going to use orange paint for the owl today. Just kidding, the orange has to go for its feet. I'm not going to make an orange owl. Hey, Abby, what color should my owl be? Purple. Purple? Okay. Purple owl it is. So I'm just going <laughs> to put the paint right on my hand. Uh, you guys can brush it on. That would probably be a little easier. But I'm just going to spread this purple, soon to be owl paint, on my hand, on my palm and my fingers. And then when you've got that all spread around so that you can get a good hand print, you're gonna take your piece of paper and flip it upside down, probably should have done that before you put the paint on your hands. And then take your hand and place it down over the branch like this. And then you've got a handprint to start for the base of your owl. Now I'm gonna take some of this extra purple paint on my hand and I'm gonna fill in the middle so that the center of my hand will become the body of the owl.
like so. Um, and now that I have purple paint all over my hand, I'm gonna grab the orange. You can grab your orange paint now. You're gonna need orange, white, and black for the beak and the feet and the eyes. So you can take your orange paint now. Um, I'm gonna do this in a way that I don't get purple all over the orange. Maya? Yeah? I just, <laughs> just realized that. <laughs> Don't hate me, but I think it's supposed to be the paper plate. <laughs> it's okay. I can go back to the paper plate. Now that your hands are all dirty, that's no, okay. It's okay. <laughs> no, that's are so awesome, fun. right? <laughs> no, it's okay. I. I'm all L's all day, every day. <laughs> no, as long as you guys are having a fun time and learning things. That's that's what matters to me. Um, so if you want to do the paper plate one, I can uh, run and wash my hands off real quick. Uh, does that sound good, or do you want me to keep going with uh, the handprint? Jennifer, what would you do? You want her to finish the paper plate one? I'm sorry, yeah. I can. Let's just finish up the handprint hawk, you know? We can always yeah. wing it next time and like and do the paper plate owl another time. Your hands are painted. Let's go with it. Yeah. <laughs> and, if, and if anybody's falling along, you're not the only one with your hands sturdy right now. <laughs> and the hawk so, is so uh, cute. Yeah, the handprint is so cute. We can all leave our hands dirty for a little bit longer then. So um, if you're following along, you can take your orange paint. Um, and you can also flip your piece of paper back over so your handprint is upside down. Um, you can take some of your orange paint. I'm actually going to use a little brush for this, so it'll probably be easier. I'm going to take some of this and put it in the middle on my handprint here to give my owl a beak. You see that right, right on there in the middle. And then I'm going to take the same orange paint and use it for the feet. This is really where the where the owl starts to come together. And in putting the orange paint on the branch for the feet, I'm giving my owl three little toes. You can see one foot there, and then I'm going to put the other foot next to it in about the same spot so that it looks like my owl is sitting on the branch. And I'm trying to make kind of a thick layer of orange paint here so that you can really see the feet on my owl. I'm going to put away the orange paint now. I'm going to use my already dirty hands to get the orange paint off of the paintbrush. Um, we're going with the, the handprint since I'm <laughs> decorated. And then uh, you can use your white paint. I'm gonna use yellow uh, because I want a really colorful owl today. Um, and I'm going to pick a thumb, which either of my thumbs is cleaner at the moment. And I'm going to put some yellow paint or in your case, white paint on my thumb. And I'm going to spread it around just a little bit. And then I'm going to make an eye print on my owl. So took off some of the foot there too, but you can kind of see the yellow there in the middle next to the beak. Uh, and then I'm gonna do it again on the other side to give my owl two eyes and hopefully not take off more of the orange paint from the feet.
And there we go. Two little yellow owl eyes. And then lastly, to finish off our owls, we need to give them pupils. So for this, I would recommend you use black paint uh, so that it will show up on your owl, which I'm going to use blue and hope that it is dark enough to, so you guys can see it in, in the yellow. I'm gonna put it on the paintbrush again here. And kind of just dab it right in the middle of my owl's eye. And then I'm going to do it again on the other eye. And then we should have a little owl. Hopefully an owl with better color palette than mine, but hey, there could be purple owls. We don't know. I'm going to set my paintbrush down somewhere where I won't get paint on the table. And I'll show you my owl again. There he is, there's my little, my little handprint owl. Uh, does anyone have any questions about the handprint owl? Was it easy to follow? <laughs> Thank you, Jennifer. I really put a, put a lot of effort into my... Oh, thank you, Cindy, as well. Purple is my favorite color, so of course I would love a purple owl. <laughs> well, then I'm glad that I had it. I'm glad that I asked Abby and did purple so that we could have a beautiful owl for you here today. But I want to see some of your guys' owls, if you were following along with the craft. Um, I should not touch the computer at the moment. Um, but if anyone would like to, I would be happy to see some of your handprint owls as well. If you would like to show your owl, just type either your name in the chat or let us know in the chat that you would like to show your owl and we will allow you to share your screen. Oh, Anthony does. Give it just one second. Nice. That's a cute little owl. I like that. Beautiful. Wow, you guys are so talented. These are some awesome owls. That I'm Another seeing. purple owl. <laughs> Another purple owl. That's a, the correct choice. A purple owl. Thank you guys for sharing. There's some really cool owls. Happy to see them. Move this um, over here. Is it okay if I take us out for today? Yeah, I think that sounds good. I can bring Abby in unless there's anything else that you need from me. Uh, actually, I think I should be able to close this out so we shouldn't be uh, needing Abby anymore for today, I think. Okay, sounds good, thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much. Let's give her a round of applause, everybody. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your time. It was a lot of fun. I enjoyed making a handprint owl with you today. Perfect. All righty. So for, to close us out for today, we're going to watch our summer library song. For those of you who haven't got a chance to see this, um, the lovely Stefan, he's on here today. He helped in making this beautiful video and write the song, and I hope y'all enjoy it. Just, I can help you find just the 
Have a good day, everybody.